This is actually a first for me and for you because this video is the first time I will have a video in English. And I thought, well, maybe start with a video that is actually somewhat important. So today's topic is the DC to DC converter on our zeros. Last year I suffered from a lack of 12 volt supply and first I thought, well, maybe it's a fuse, maybe it's a con bad connection, but that wasn't the case. Actually, the cuts of the 12 volt system were unexpected. So after some investigation and some research on the official Zero Motorcycles forum and a look into the Zero manual, I came to the con conclusion that it might be a faulty DC to DC converter. Well, I checked it, I measured it and indeed my DC to DC converter failed on me. So today's video will be about what is the problem and how can we fix it. But first of all, let's take a closer look at our DC to DC converter and the place it is mounted in our motorcycles. And if you might ask yourself right now, why does my zero look like it does? The answer is quite simple. As you might not know, I am currently building a quick charge system for my zero. So I dismantled everything. So I have easy access to all the connections to fit the new system. If you're interested in the system, please check out the other videos. And if you're really enjoying those videos, well, they might be in German and you want to understand what I'm actually talking about, just leave a comment below and I will give you a quick English tour of the system later on. But now let's focus on the DC to DC converter and where it is placed. So here we have the place where the actual magic happens. To our left is our main battery and to our right is our motor controller. And between those two components sits this. This frame carries our DC to DC converter. This is actually the replacement one. And between those two screws sits our MBB or our main bike board, this part here. And this thing communicates with our battery and our motor controller and also enables our Bluetooth communication. To remove this frame, you will have to loosen those four screws and the corresponding mounting points are down in there. And we will take a closer look right now. If we actually take a closer look, we can see those two mounting points. This would be the front, this is the battery connector and those cables to go to the rear to our controller. It is actually quite the pain to remove our frame this one out of this space because of all the cables, the brake lines. You will have to take your time to get everything out of this space. And now actually a word of caution. Since we are working on an electric vehicle, we should make sure that we are working without any voltage applied to the system. So first thing to do is pull the key. Second thing to do is we will pull some fuses. The first fuse we will pull is at the doghouse right here. We push the tray holder in and pull it out and we can remove the fuse. There is a second fuse right here. This fuse is for our main bike board. We will also remove it. And then there is a third fuse which will actually go to our DC to DC converter. And this is very important since there can be voltage on those lines if you already pulled all the previous fuses and pulled the key. So to remove this fuse we will have to remove this orange shielding. And there's our fuse holder, 4M fuse, we will remove this fuse. Okay, now we have removed all the fuses. Next thing to do is, well, it might be possible that there is no voltage on the system, but we should check. So we get our voltage meter and we check all the pins against each other is if there is any voltage on them. We do the same with the motor controller. In the top is our positive terminal and lower down here is our negative. But as with the little plug here, we check 
all the pins against each other. And we only should start working if we are in a voltage range below 10 volts. Just a side note, if you just rode with your motorcycle or if you had it on for a certain amount of time, you should turn it off and start by a waiting period of about 10 to 15 minutes. The reason is quite simple or maybe not that quite simple because if we turn off our electric vehicle in general, you might disconnect the main battery, but there is still voltage in the system. And this is due to the fact that our motor controller also contains a DC circuit or a DC buffer would be correct, since there are some capacitors in there that store the charge. And this charge takes 10 to 15 minutes to dissipate. During this time, it would be very dangerous to either touch those contacts or to short them out. So we wait our 10 to 15 minutes and then we check again. It's not bad if you check twice or three times, it's only beneficial for your safety and health. So now that we did make sure that everything is without any voltage and we don't risk our own safety, we can commence with the exchange of our DC to DC converter. As I already mentioned, I already took out this frame and I removed the main bike board. But just so you know, if your main bike board is still mounted on here and this frame is inside the motorcycle, you have to re remove this connector and this connector from the main bike board. This is quite easy. You just push down on this lever and then you pull gently up the plug. Also this one. After you rem removed this frame, you pull it out of the motorcycle and you can hold it in your hands. The thing that will be mounted is the main bike board up here and the DC, DC, DC to DC converter. But it would be this one. This is the original and this is already the replacement. So to remove this old converter, we first have to disconnect this connector. This is also quite easy. On the lower side is also a little lever. You pull it or you push it down and you can remove the plug. To remove the DC to DC converter itself, we can see we have four mounting points and also four corresponding threads in this frame. We will have to pull out the screws and we can remove this old DC to DC converter. You might ask yourself now, why am I actually replacing the original DC to DC converter with a different one? Actually, there are two reasons. First of all, there is the price. This one is nearly 500 bucks. This one, on the other hand, maybe 300. Despite the fact that this one only provides 450 watts and not 500, but that's, as I already said, not a big deal. But the most important thing is the original converter is rated at 80 volts standard. Well, if we do look up the data sheet, it will go up to 120 volts DC. As we know, our battery pack fully charged stays at 116.4 volts. So we actually have a safety margin of, well, let's say a little less than four volts. In theory, it should work and actually it does for quite some time. But sooner or later, this DC to DC converter will fail on you. On the other hand, this DC to DC converter is rated nominal at 96 volts. And it is rated to a maximum of 142 volts. So this DC to DC converter is way more suited for this application. And this is actually the reason why I go for this DC to DC converter and not the stock one. Indeed, this one can only provide 450 watts, but actually it will be sufficient for the motorcycle. But in any case, you should make sure that 450 watts is actually enough for your motorcycle. 
after we finally remove the old DC to DC converter, we can now fit the new one. But we have to modify the frame. We have to make a little cutout on the top and on the bottom. And I know no one likes to hear that, but we have to take the angle grinder to it. But nonetheless, we also have four new mounting positions. We can take four M5 screws and use some self-retaining lock nuts. So we actually did mount the new DC to DC converter and now it's time to take a closer look at these connections. Right now you might think fine, I changed the DC to DC converter, let's plug it all back in and go for a ride, but stop. There is actually a major difference between this DC to DC converter and the old one. And we will take a closer look. As we can see here, we have our output negative and output positive to our left. This one on the other hand has its input to the left and the key in the middle. The Cefcon has its enable pin to the far right. As we can see, those two connectors don't match. They may match physically, but not the pins itself. So we will have to change some pins around in the plug on the motorcycle side. And it is actually quite easy, so we will take a look. So here we have our connector. And to remove the pins, we first have to remove our lock bridge or our locking mechanism. We can do this by pulling those sides up and removing it entirely. We then can go on by removing the individual pins. And to do this, we take a Phillips head screwdriver and go in from the rear. There are some retaining pins inside here and we can pry them to the side and remove the pin. Here we can see the retaining pin itself. We have one on the right side and one on the left side. We then take our screwdriver, go in from the back and push those pins to the sides. And there we have our pin. Now we can go ahead and remove the other pins and change them out so they will fit our new DC to DC converter. But I would also recommend to mark each individual cable so you later know which function it serves. If we do want to fit the contact again, we just take it and push it in. We know that the contact sits right if we hear a faint clicking. We also can pull a bit on the contact or on the wire itself to check for proper seating. And now we can take our plastic piece here again, push it back in and this piece will make sure that those contacts will stay in place. This would be our plug after we changed everything nice and tidy. And please remember, Zero put some dielectric grease in here. We should also put some dielectric grease back in here. Actually, that's it. We successfully replaced the DC to DC converter. Well, you would replace or would remount the frame with the MBB back here and also would install the tank cover and the seat. But we should not forget to also fit the fuses back in so the system will actually work. And last but not least, we should check if the system actually works. So we get our key and turn on our motorcycle. And as we can see, everything turns back on. Our lights are working. Everything is the way it should be. All right. And as always, thanks for watching. And as this is the first time I try those videos in English, I would very much appreciate it if you could let me know 
how you think this video went and please give me a little grammar check down in the comments. Somewhat around March to July, I experienced that my DC... Just for reference, this video is only... Real and if you might be wondering why my zero looks like it is, since this is the first video in English, you might not know, but I am currently building a quick charge system for my zero, so I dismantled everything I need to get to the comp. And if you might ask, you know, and our rear end supports. Support, meine Güte. After we removed the old DC, DC the, oh, meine Güte. After we removed. Oh, das ist doch aber. Das ist doch nicht mehr normal. After we removed. <laughs> Mann! <laughs>